I'm back for another installment of the Morning Sun podcast. Um, taking a lunch break from work and trying to maintain my podcast. So I'm gonna hit go on the audio. Yo, yo, yo. Welcome to the Morning Sun Podcast. Once again, I'm your host, TJ Two Braids. Uh, This is episode eight. You could call this Christmas edition because I got the tree in the background. Uh, This podcast is brought to you by Anchor FM. Download the free Anchor FM app. Uh, Start your own podcast today. Mess around with it. Play with it. Most importantly, it's free and they'll distribute your podcast for you, which is super dope. You can find this podcast on YouTube, Spotify, Google Podcasts, uh, and right now it's in the works on being on Apple Podcasts. So hopefully that'll happen soon. It's also brought to you by Cozy. Um, wearing this full body length Cozy pullover that I won at my last holiday Christmas party I stole from my coworker and friend, Alicia Smith. Sorry, but uh, I needed it. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, this is the Morning Sun Podcast. I'm your host, TJ Two Braids. Today, we have three topics. The first segment will cover the snitch code. Uh, what is the snitch code? Why do we follow it? And then kind of some, you know, summing up what happened with Takashi 69 somebody out there's favorite rapper. Not mine, but someone's buying his music to make him relevant. Uh, Number two, the second segment will be about Star Wars, the era of Star Wars, the rise of Skywalker, um, and, you know, the upcoming movie that's coming out this week. And then the third segment will be uh, sports related. It'll be on KG and LeBron because there's some, they're they're in uh, basketball headlines today. And then the era of the super team uh, and what I think about super teams. But I would just encourage y'all, man. Thank you for listening to the podcast. If you like it, please share it, comment. If there's any topics you want to hear talked about, everything is an open book except politics. I'm not really going to get into politics uh, because every time I post about them, one, people get offended. Two, people think I'm super into politics, but I'm not. And three... Jesus is king of my life. Uh, Do I vote? Yes, I do. But I'm not going to get into politics that much on my podcast. Everything else is an open book. So if you have any topics you want to hear discussed, feel free to shoot me a DM, comment, like it. But we're going to get right into the first segment, the snitch code. So, you know, we've seen all types of movements. Diddy used to have one, Puff Daddy, stop snitching, and he wore the t-shirt everywhere for like a year. Stop snitching. You grow up, uh, you know, even as a kid, nobody likes a tattletale, right? And so I remember in third grade, I'm going to tell you all this story. In third grade, right, we was playing at recess. um, And we was playing soccer, and they kicked me off the field because I kept scoring goals. They didn't want me to play the next game, so I had to sit out. They was hating. Number one, they was just hating. I was like... Cristiano Ronaldo before before he was, you know. But uh, they kicked me off. So I go off. I'm down on the field, a different field. So there was a soccer field, and then there was just an empty field past the playground. So I'm in the empty field. I'm just picking up rocks, and I'm just throwing them, right, into the air. I'm not trying to hit anyone. I'm just seeing how far I can throw these rocks because I don't have anything else to do because they kicked me off the soccer field. Um, And I was super athletic. I'm not going to go, you know, swing on the swings and go down the slide. That's just not the type of kid I was. But so I'm I'm grabbing these rocks and I'm chucking them, seeing how far I can throw them because that's what boys do. Um, And I didn't know this was going to happen, right? But I pick up a big rock, probably about this size, maybe a little smaller than a baseball. Um, Bigger than a ping pong ball, but smaller than a baseball. Um, and so I pick it up and I just chuck it, right? I just let it fly. And this kid starts running into the field. And you can see it's like the trajectory. They're on path. 
to hit each other, right? And I'm like, oh, crap, bro, please, please. And I'm yelling his name. I don't know what his name was. Hey, Billy, Billy, stop. Bro, they're on trajectory to hit each other. The kid's running, right? He doesn't even see it. The the rock comes and poof, snipes him in the side of the head. He falls over. He's bleeding all over the place. I'm at this point terrified uh, because I think I'm in trouble, right? And all the kids who kicked me off the soccer field ran over. You know what they said? They said, TJ did that on... And I'm like, hold up, man. I got another telemarketer calling me. They're like, TJ kicked us off because he was mad we kicked... Or TJ did that on purpose because we kicked him off the soccer field. I'm like, what? Number one, that's not true. Number two, even if it is, why are you tattling on me, right? So even as a kid, and, and long story short, you know, the kid ended up getting like 10 stitches. I got uh, suspended. I didn't do it on purpose from what I remember, but... As a kid, you, you, you even as a kid, you're like, why are you tattletaling on me, right? You got the kids nobody likes because they're always tattling. So we have this mentality not to snitch, right? And then you take that into the circumstance of someone like Takashi 6 9 who is not a gangster, right? There's all these rappers out here swear they're hard. I think it was Bizzle. Um, he had a line, something like, I know dudes who sell real dope, and they don't even talk like that on their cell phones. It's like you claiming to be something that you're obviously not. Who is Takashi Six Nine gonna beat up in a fight one on one, right? And anyone can get a gun. Shooting someone don't make you hard. I used to tell my homies in the streets that back when I was in the streets, you got a gun that don't make you tough. My grandma, who's eighty eight, could shoot someone, right? So we got these rappers who act like they hard, but you got you got Takashi who. Wanted to portray a gangster, be a blood, all these crazy things, right? And then he gets, what, kidnapped, beat up, robbed. All this stuff happens. A lot of them say it's, uh, a lot of them say it's, um, you know, his own people who did a lot of this stuff to him. But, so then he snitches and he, he's testifying against all these people and everyone's saying Takashi's a snitch and when he gets out of prison, he's gonna die and he, he just signed his own death warrant and all these things you know right and it got me thinking like number one who invented the snitch code um two why do we follow it why are we loyal to the code right we don't want to be labeled as a snitch but the reality is you're going to be loyal to a code that's not going to be loyal to you right so people can say they was in the streets they can say i'm not a snitch they can say I'm a gang member, right? Not me personally, just general. People can say that about themselves. But we're loyal to a code that's not going to be loyal to you. So you're loyal to a code that's not going to be loyal to you. What do I mean by that? I got a brother doing life in prison right now. Because he lived by the snitch code, right? I'm not going to snitch on no one. Okay. How many of his homies you think sent him Christmas money this year? He been in the joint for like 16 years. How many of them sent him Christmas money you think this year? How many you think wrote him a letter? How many you think visited him personally? Took time out of their day and week to go visit him? How many you think is finna help him buy a new tablet because he just called me yesterday and said I need a new tablet? Right? How many are going to make sure he's A1, all straight, all good for the remainder of his sentence? He's doing life, right? So we loyal to a code that's not going to be loyal to you. And, and we justify it by saying, well, at least I'm not no snitch. Oh, that's your brother's situation. When I, if I go to prison, my homies ain't like that because they my brothers, right? We family. You think that's true? You think it's true that if you go to prison, your homies are just going to be with you. They're going to write you. They're going to visit you. They're going to send you money for the rest of your sentence. Now, there are in some situations people that do that. But I would I would bet my next paycheck and Christmas is coming up. So I need to buy gifts. I would bet my next paycheck that more often than not. 
Your homies forget about you. They quit sending you money, right? They try to smash your girl. They, whatever they do. And that's just the reality. So we loyal to a code that's not finna be loyal to us. So I'm thinking about that. Um, and you can say what you want. You can say you don't agree with me. You can say you do agree with me. We all have our own opinions. And that's the beauty of free will. I'm not afraid to voice my opinion. And I'm not afraid to dialogue with someone about their opinion. And so my hopes with this podcast is even in the near future that people would chime in. You know, on Facebook video, we're on a live stream. I could bring you on video theoretically right now we could have a conversation right because i'm trying to create a space where we can have these type of conversations uh you know and i know people listen and they like my podcast and when i preach and and do all these things which is cool but also i just want to let the listeners know that this is a space where other people can dialogue with me whether it be I bring you on the screen on the live stream or you actually come in person and be on the podcast. But when it comes to the snitch code, I'm thinking, how come no one's talking about Takashi's homies who robbed him, right? Takashi's homies who kidnapped him, who were only living, who were only with him for their money. Isn't that as disloyal, if not more? We, we treat someone like a rat, like a snitch, and we, we, we excommunicate them, right? But what about your homies who are only around you for your money? They're only around you because you have a persona. You're famous. You got a lot of followers, right? Ain't that just as fake, if not more fake, than snitching? I mean, you tell me. But why are we going to be loyal to a code that's not going to be loyal to you? Because at the end of the day, it's your life. You do whatever you want to do. If you don't want to go to prison, so you snitch, that's your decision. If you go to prison because you say, I'm that loyal to my friends, fine, there's nothing wrong with that. But the reality is, are your friends, when you get locked down and go do that bid in the pen, are they going to be just as loyal to you? I would probably say maybe there's a couple that will, but for the majority... People say they're your brothers. People say they're your family. And then pretty soon they forget about you. And I see people to this day, they're like, yo, your brother's a legend. It's like, but do you write them? Do you visit them? Do you send them money? Like, he's not dead. You know what I'm saying? You talking about him like he's gone. You can still have a relationship with him if that's your boy. If that's your homie, right? So that's something that I just wanted to talk about real quick, man. Just the reality that we're being loyal to a code that isn't always loyal to us. And number two, like, with people like Takashi and other people, it's like, if you're not really about that life, then why are you in the streets? You know what I'm saying? You portraying an image to get rich. You portraying an image of being a thug, a gangster. But then when it comes time to go do time, you just rat on everyone. So that's the flip side of it. Like, if you ain't really about that life, don't portray that image. You know what I'm saying? I'm fine with admitting the fact, look, I am not a gangster. I'm not a gang member. I don't sell dope. I avoid fights. I'm a big dude, right? So it's not like I'm weak. People are just going to easily beat me up. But I avoid fights at all costs because I got a family to worry about. Even if I were to win the fight, let's say I go to jail for assault. What happens to my wife? What happens to my kids? You know what I mean? So you got to think about that type of stuff. Uh, if you ain't really about that life, don't portray that image. Now, a lot of what I do is I tell my story about what I came from. Because there was at one time, I didn't care about life. You know what I mean? I didn't have a family. I didn't have kids to think about. But now I do. So that's just something to think about. Um... Uh, but yeah, that's the first segment. So welcome to the Morning Sun Podcast. I'm your host, TJ Two Braids. Uh, this is the Morning Sun Podcast brought to you by Anchor FM. It's going to be on Spotify, Facebook, all of those lovely things. I'm trying to read some of the comment section because uh, I can't see it. My phone's too far away. But 
Yeah, like I said, this is the Morning Sun Podcast. Um, I'm your host, TJ Two Braids. And the second segment we finna get into is Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. Um, so, Will, what up, bro? You still beefing with DC cash flow, huh? Hey, man, that's, that's your business. Hey, keep making that music, though, bro. So, Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker. Is it that bad? Um, I've already read reviews that labeled it the worst Star Wars movie ever made. <laughs> Which doesn't make me feel good because I pre-ordered tickets to go see it on Friday. So, hopefully, that's not true, right? Hopefully, Star Wars Rise of Skywalker is not the worst Star Wars film ever made. But could it really be that bad? Um, the reality is, like, does our nostalgia ruin... No, there's not going to be any spoilers. I haven't seen the movie, so I'm not going to say nothing about the film. But um, does our nostalgia ruin new things for us? Because you look, there's avid Star Wars fans. There's people who've been fans from the beginning. So if you were to look at someone like my sister Katie, who might still be watching this, she probably remembers the original Star Wars coming out, right? My cousin Tommy Gibbons, if you see this, what up, cuz? But like, my cousin Sean, my brother Jacob, you know, my sister Tina, my uncle Tom, all these people. Yeah, I really do have an uncle named Tom. Don't laugh. But uh, you think about these things, like, you you think about it, it's like, they, they've been there from the beginning, so they, well, probably some of them have went and seen Star Wars 1 in theaters when it first came out, right? Um, and then you have the, the second generation who came around and got, got, um, got into it with episode, you know, 1, 2, and 3, Revenge of the Sith, Attack of the Clones, The Phantom Menace. And then there's the next, you know, the third installment. And people have been hating on the third the third trilogy since it came out. People have hated The Force Awakens. People by far hated The Last Jedi. I've heard so many people say that's the worst Star Wars ever made. Me personally, I liked all of them. And quite honestly, yeah, the storyline is better in the older ones. But the graphics and the action, it can't be topped with the new ones. And so I'm sitting here thinking to myself, and now I'm thinking out loud to everyone listening, has, does our nostalgia ruin new things for us? Because we're setting the standard at what Star Wars was for us when we first experienced it, right? And so now we're trying to we're trying to equate that to every new Star Wars movie. It has to be as good as our favorite Star Wars movie. It has to be just as good, if not better, right? And so then we don't like things because it didn't follow the plot we wanted. It didn't answer every question we had. It wasn't as good as, it didn't make us feel the way the original favorite one in our life made us feel. Um, does nostalgia ruin things for us? Me, as a fan, I love all the Star Wars. I even like The Phantom Menace when Anakin was a little kid. I know a lot of people hate that one. I'm like, you got Anakin as a little kid. Uh, he's a pod racer. You know, and all these... I like them all. Personally, like a lot of people say Revenge of the Sith is their favorite. That's one that makes me angry. So I don't necessarily watch that one a lot. Is it good? Yeah, it's real good, but it makes me angry. So everyone has their own opinion, uh, but I like them all. I don't think any of them are bad. Like, I totally hate them. Like, I've had people say, I'm not going to see this one because I'm not a fan of the new movies. Well, is your nostalgia ruining that for you? Because you're, if you're expecting it to be what Star Wars was. This is a whole new director, a whole new plot, a whole new characters trying to weave into the same story. So, I mean, that could even be related to sports, you know? Does nostalgia ruin everything? To me, Michael Jordan's the greatest. No one can top him. Because of that nostalgia, do I not 
appreciate the greatness of LeBron James, Giannis, Kawhi Leonard, Steph Curry, whatever. Um, but getting back to getting back to Star Wars, um, I'm going to see it on Friday. Uh, it's gonna be dope. We're going with a group of like six to eight friends, so it should be super dope. Hey, this weekend coming up finna be super exciting. Why? Because Chelsea and I get two nights in a row of babysitting where we can go do what we want. The last time we had two weekend nights alone away from kids, back when we didn't have kids. <laughs> so shout out to our babysitter on Friday night and shout out to City View Church because once every couple of months, our church does a Saturday night, five hours of free babysitting. You can drop your kids off with trustworthy people who will watch over and care for your kids and you can go do what you need to do have date shop in peace go home and nap whatever it is them are the plugs right there um i don't know what's gonna happen i've had people say in star wars uh ray maybe she's palpatine's granddaughter uh, maybe her and kylo are related I don't know. I'm not really here to get into the plot. I just, I seen so many reviews that were negative. I even saw one title that said, Rise of Skywalker succumbs to the dark side. <laughs> I seen one that says, uh, this latest Star Wars is the worst movie in the whole entire series. So, I, I don't, you know. I'm just hoping people don't let their nostalgia ruin the experience for them. I'm pumped. I know I'm going to like it because I'm a visual person. I love the graphics. That alone and the action are going to make it worth it for me. And, you know, we'll see what it is. But that's the second segment. This is the Morning Sun Podcast. I'm your host, TJ Two Braids. Uh, we coming to you live and direct from Minneapolis, Minnesota. I got my Seahawks hat on. Um, I'm a Vikings fan first, but I'm also a Seahawks fan. And uh, shout out to my 206 family. Hope you're listening. Hope you're watching. Uh, you know, we actually, if, can still get the number two seed. If we went out, the Vikings went out, and if the Packers, or, and if the Seahawks beat the 49ers, I forgot the scenario, but... Yeah, so we need the Seahawks to beat the 49ers. So I'm rooting for them too. Uh, but this podcast is brought to you by Anchor FM. It's brought to you by Angry Catfish, the number one coffee destination in the Twin Cities. Shout out to my favorite barista. Don't know their name, but they make a heck of a cup of coffee. Low key though, if you're looking for a good place to go get coffee... Go to Angry Catfish. It's on 28th and 42nd. On that corner, you can get the best cup of coffee there is. And you can also get donuts at the Baker's Wife. They got some of the best donuts in the cities. So, shout out to them. Maybe they'll sponsor this podcast one day. Probably not, but a brother can hope. So, we're going to get into the last segment. And then I'm going to get ready to head to work. Uh, back to work. Um... Uh, the last segment is on sports. It's on the NBA. So I recently saw a headline about Kevin Garnett and LeBron James. And I actually shared it on my Instagram page. Shout out to Instagram. Follow the Morning Sun Podcast on Instagram. At the Morning Sun Podcast. Uh, follow us on YouTube at TJ Two Braids. And from there, man, share this podcast if you like it. But... I, I actually posted it on Instagram. It's a picture of LeBron and KG kind of talking on the court, trash talking each other. And the headline is something along the lines of KG was on a different podcast, some sports podcast. And he said, um, he said, we broke LeBron. We're the reason LeBron left Cleveland the first time and went and formed a super team in Miami. Like, how do you think that happened? That happened because of us which is really nothing but facts, to be honest with you. So let me break this down, man. I don't remember the year, but I do know this. I was a LeBron James fan before many people were a LeBron James fan. And if you want to ask people, if you want to fact check this, 
Ask my dad and my... Well, you can't ask my mom. She's in heaven. Ask my dad. He bought me a LeBron James jersey the summer where LeBron James got drafted. So before his first season ever even started, I had a LeBron James jersey. I followed LeBron James all throughout high school because I had a subscription to Slam and because he was like the most recruited high school player ever. He was always doing articles in Slam. There's two other people you can fact check this on. My cousin, Mike Veltira. I don't know how you're going to fact check it because I don't know if he has Facebook. But you could also ask my niece's grandma, Adrian. She'll tell you straight up. Um, hello, Kathy. St. Paul Hotel. A great place. Maybe they'll sponsor this podcast. Give me a free hotel room. I'm just kidding. <laughs> hello, though. But you could fact check this with Adrian, she is my niece Jasmine's grandma. She will tell you I've been a LeBron James fan from the beginning. Somewhere down the road, I quit liking LeBron James. And you know when it happened? It happened actually when the Celtics were beating the Cavs in the playoffs. I think it was 2007. I don't know. I can't remember the year. The last year LeBron James was a Cavalier the first time. He quit on his team. The Celtics eliminated him. Paul Pierce was getting in him, right? A lot of people discredit Paul Pierce because he says foolish things. Paul Pierce was a walking bucket, and when him and LeBron went in the playoffs together, it was always a heck of a battle. But the year I quit being a LeBron fan was the year he quit on the Cavs. It wasn't even before he joined the Super... It wasn't when he joined the Super Team, right? It was the year before that when he completely quit on his team. Gave up. Knew he wasn't going to beat the Celtics. And you can say what you want. Were the Celtics the first big three? The first artificial big three. Meaning, I mean, you have the Showtime Lakers who had a bunch of stars on their team. The Celtics, the Pistons, even the Bulls. But what I mean by artificial... But what I mean by artificial big three is they weren't just drafted and, and, and organically made. So Ray Allen signed with the Celtics. KG was traded to the Celtics. Him and Paul Pierce and Ray Allen, they all orchestrated this artificial big three, right? But they weren't in their prime, right? KG was on the tail end of his prime. Ray Allen also. Paul Pierce, you could... You could give an argument was kind of in his prime. But LeBron James couldn't beat him in the playoffs. And so he quit on his team. Stopped trying. I think they lost in six games, four to two. And that's the day I, I quit being a LeBron fan. So people think I just don't like LeBron because they compare him to Jordan. I've never liked him. Look, man, I was probably a LeBron fan before you were. Now I've come around. I've come full circle. I don't dislike him as much as I used to. Off the court, he's phenomenal. He's by far one of the greatest athletes, entrepreneurs, community service athletes in the history of sports. What he does for kids, building his own school, giving back to the community, all of that, that's excellent. By far better than people like Michael Jordan in that regard. Um, but as far as a basketball player, that was the day where he stopped being my favorite player um and he went on of course we know what happened he joined the miami heat heat he formed a super team artificial super team again just like the celtics did except they were in their prime they promised 10 championships or whatever they promised i don't know why they ever did that but um and now you look at the state of the nba and we're in the super team era right by far, who's the best super team to be formed is the Warriors. Um, but even with that, until they added KD, they weren't an artificial super team. That's what people don't realize. They were formed organically through the draft. Heck of a GM and scout to draft, train, and um, progress Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, and Draymond Green, right? They weren't artificially made until KD joined them. And before KD joined them, they were already 
the regular season king as far as the team who's won the most games ever in the regular season. So, but then you see, you know, you got, who else do you got? You got other people who are forming teams. You got the Lakers now. You had the Heat, of course. Uh, you had the Warriors and, and all these different things. And who knows what's going to happen from there. But are super teams good or bad for the NBA? That's really the question to think about. There's a lot of people who say they're bad. Um, I'm on the side of, I don't necessarily agree with leaving your team to go join someone because you can't beat them, right? Uh, so a lot of people give Kevin Garnett heat because, or Kevin, not Kevin Durant heat because he left the Thunder and joined the Warriors. Um which is valid, is justified, right? But at the same time, I also believe that the players should have more power than they do, right? And so you have owners and teams and GMs who don't treat their players fairly, who could cut you at the drop of a dime after investing everything you've invested in a place. Um, and so I'm not really opposed to super teams. And I don't think super teams last. That's the thing, like, you look at the Warriors, case in point. Now, injuries played a lot in this because Steph Curry's out, Klay Thompson's out, obviously Kevin Durant left, Iguodala left, whatever. Um, I don't think super teams really are going to last more than a few years. You know what I'm saying? No matter what team you form, due to the salary cap, due to injuries, due to whatever, it's not really going to, you know, you're not going to see the Lakers be a super team with the same core for the next 10 years, right? Uh, there's already talks that AD is going to leave after this year. So it is what it is. What I do find interesting is there's a lot of pro athletes nowadays who don't really seem interested in winning. Winning is not a top priority, which I don't fully understand. I mean, I get it. You're rich. You get to do what you love life's easy uh, but as far as people who just are okay with losing right I think Stefan Diggs doesn't care if he wins honestly as long as he gets the ball and gets paid winning it doesn't really matter you look at other people like KD he leaves the Warriors first of all he leaves the Thunder to win titles which he does then he leaves the Warriors for the Brooklyn Nets Wait, what? Why? The Brooklyn Nets do not give you a better chance to win. So if you want if you're all about winning, why would you leave? Then you have other players who just do all types of crazy stuff um just for money. They're not really interested in winning. And so that's something that I don't fully understand when I watch pro sports. If you're not playing to win, what are you playing for? Right? You're already going to be rich. Or you have athletes who won't stay on a winning team because uh, they want more money. It's like, dude, you're already going to make like $20 million this year. So you could stay with that and keep winning or you could go get $30 million and lose. Like you look at Antonio Brown. Why did he leave the Steelers? He was getting paid millions of dollars. He was one of the top five receivers in the NFL. He was on a winning organization, a franchise. You look at the Steelers, even this year, their starting quarterbacks hurt. Le'Veon Bell's gone. Antonio Brown's gone. They're still on the verge of the playoffs because they're a winning organization. They know how to win in the NFL. Antonio Brown leaves to go get paid by the Oakland Raiders. What? You want $10 million more a year that bad that you're going to go play on one of the trashiest franchises. And when's the last time the Raiders were good? And just as a franchise with their morale, look what they did at the last game this year of, at the Coliseum. They're booing. They're throwing stuff at Derek Carr, their own quarterback. That's the franchise you want to go to just to make a few million more a year. You're already rich. 
And if you're smart with your money, you'll be rich for the rest of your life. And there'll be generations in your family that accumulate wealth. But you love money that much, you're willing to just leave. I don't, I don't get that. I, I wasn't even finna really, I wasn't even finna really um, get on this topic. But yeah, a lot of athletes they don't seem, con they don't seem interested in winning more than getting paid. Which I mean, I get it. If you're, you know, what I'm saying, you have a breakout year. You go from, you're only making, you know, a couple hundred thousand a year. You have a breakout season. You become one of the best in the league, and you go off and you go get paid because you deserve that. Fine, that's totally, I understand it. But for the players who are already established stars, already making top salaries, and then they leave franchises to go play for a bum team who can pay them more money. I don't, I don't want, don't you want to win? Maybe I'm just too competitive. I'm the person who will destroy my grandma at Scrabble just so I can win. <laughs> right? <laughs> It is what it is. But uh, this is the Morning Sun Podcast. I'm your host, TJ Two Braids. Uh, I want to thank everyone for watching. Will, I did see your comment saying, let me jump on. You should, you should DM me today. Let's set up a time where we can talk about you can be on the next episode. I think that would be super dope. Uh, I think we should plan it out, though, in advance a little bit. So I would love to have you on it. If you have any topics you want to talk about with me, would love to do that with you. Um, but this is going to be me wrapping up the podcast. Once I get done, I'll put the video on YouTube sometime by tomorrow. It'll be on Spotify, Anchor FM. Uh, go follow us at the Morning Sun Podcast, right? And hope you like this video, share it. Thank you for watching. I'm finna go to work, back to work. This was my lunch break. Um, and I hope y'all have a good day, good holiday. And be blessed, man. Y'all have a good one. Peace.